the combination of resistors resistors in series and parallel what is the battery doing the same current flows through each resistor and v should be equal to v1 plus v2 effective resistance always increases hello students this is sd sir again from the temple of excellence vidyashram pre university college mysore before i would continue session 6 on my master chapter let us just recall a few concepts that we did in a previous session where we explained a beautiful concept called coding of resistors what was a resistor students we told it is a circuit element a component of a circuit a device which will resist the flow of current and you remember that beautiful clause reminder b b roy of great britain had a very good wife with golden silver necklace now in my today session i will be discussing the combination of resistors resistors in series and parallel and i shall also discuss an introduction about cells so without further time lag we will start discussing the combination of resistors dear students you might remember the combination of capacitors where i discussed capacitors in series and capacitors in parallel this is exactly the same discussion but i will discuss resistors in series and resistors in parallel so the first topic i take up is resistors in series when i have captioned resistors in series what actually i am doing here three important topics the first i will explain the condition under which two resistors are said to be connected in series second i will bring in the concept of effective or equivalent resistance and third derive an expression for effective resistance in series so now we pitch into the court and try to understand resistors in series if you observe the first circuit i have two resistors first resistor of resistance r1 and second resistor of resistance r2 yaradu resistor galive first resistor of resistance r1 second resistor of resistance r2 connected between the points a and b and as usual both the resistors are connected 
connected to a battery. What is the battery doing? It will generate some potential so that there is flow of current in the circuit. So I is the current which is flowing through the circuit. I is the current constituted from the source and therefore it is called as the main current. And if you observe the circuit, V1 is the potential across R1 and V2 is the potential across R2. So, my dear students, the potential of the circuit is getting split here. V1 becomes the potential across R1 and V2 becomes the potential across R2 and since the potential is getting split, since the potential is getting biased, such type of a circuit is called potential divider circuit where potential is getting divided. But beautifully observe, I don't write I1 is the current flowing through R1 or I2 is the current flowing through R2. I have simply written I is the current which flows through both the resistors. So children, please note, whenever two resistors are connected in series, the first condition is that the same current should flow through both of them. Why only two resistors? There will be three resistors or n resistors in series. The moment you say resistors are connected in series, the same current should flow through both of the resistors. You remember? When you say capacitors are connected in series, same charge has to be stored on them. Similarly, when I say two resistors are connected in series, same current should flow through them. And the total potential of the system should be V equals V1 plus V2. So these are the two conditions under which we say two resistors are connected in series. What is the first condition? The same current flows through each resistor and V should be equal to V1 plus V2. My first aim here students is, I have to calculate V1 and V2 individually. I know the resistance is R1 and R2. I know I is the current flowing through the resistors. Then how do I relate V1, R1 and I or V2, R2 and I? It is by using our Ohm's law. So our Ohm's law told V equals I into R from which I have V1 equals I into R1 and V2 is I into R2. Why not I1 and I2? Students, resistors are in series. Same current should flow. 
current will not change. So V1 equals I into R1. V2 equals I into R2. So substituting V equals I R1 plus I R2. I is common. So V equals I R1 plus R2. Now, if you observe here, I have two resistors R1 and R2 connected between the points A and B. If suppose the value of R1 is 1 ohm and R2 is 2 ohm, totally I get 3 ohms by using two resistors. Two resistors connected together in total is giving me 3 ohms. But what if I replace these three two resistors by a single resistor which will give me 3 ohms? That single resistor is what we call as equivalent resistor or effective resistor. That single resistor is giving me the same effect as the resistors connected in series. The same effect is produced by that single resistor which is called equivalent resistor. And what is that same effect? It should draw the same current under the same potential. Whatever equivalent resistor I have used, whatever equivalent single resistor replacing the combination, it should draw the same current under the same potential. Therefore, for this equivalent re resistor, all application of Ohm's law, V equals I into Rs. So observe, it is drawing the same current under the same potential. So if I equate equations 1 and 2, you observe, V gets cancelled. I gets cancelled. So Rs becomes equal to R1 plus R2. And this is the expression for the effective resistance when two resistors are connected in series. So my dear students, if I am analyzing this expression, it clearly shows when two resistors are connected in series, the effective resistance always increases. Unlike your capacitors, there for series combination, effective resistance always decreased. But for resistors in series, effective resistance always increases. It is R1 plus R2. So given two resistors, if you ask me to connect them, so the effective resistance is maximum. How do I connect? Yes, students, it has to be the series combination. Now, going to the next combination, where we say resistors in parallel. Again, how resistors are connected in parallel? Again, definition of equivalent resistance and arriving at the expression for equivalent resistance when two resistors are connected in parallel. Again, you observe, I have two resistors 
of resistance R1 and R2 saying that connected in parallel between the points A and B two resistors of resistance R1 and R2 they are connected in parallel between the points A and B and as usual connected to the source V is the potential applied to the circuit so that I is the current flowing through the circuit but beautifully observe here as the current is reaching the point A it is getting split the current is getting divided previously potential got divided here current is getting divided where I1 flows through R1 and I2 flows through R2 therefore I1 and I2 are called branch currents the very characteristic of a parallel circuit is division of currents branching of currents and therefore this circuit is called current divider system I1 and I2 are the two branch currents now so very clearly here potential is not getting split so when two resistors are connected in parallel potential difference across each resistor remains the same when two resistors were in series current remains same when two resistors are connected in parallel potential difference across each resistor remains same and total current which is the main current is the sum of the individual currents so dear friends what are the two conditions for the parallel combination of capacitors or resistors here when two resistors are connected in parallel potential difference rather voltage when I say potential difference it is nothing but voltage voltage across each resistor remains the same main current is the sum of individual currents again I need to calculate this I1 and I2 knowing R1 and R2 for which I will apply Ohm's law so my Ohm's law told V equals I into R I want current so I equals V divided by R from which I1 equals V1 by R1 and I2 equals V by R2 I wrongly told V1 by R1 why I want you all to realize this is parallel combination and potential cannot split so I1 is V by R1 and I2 is V by R2 so I equals V by R1 plus V by R2 V common in the numerator 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 now again the concept of equivalent resistor effective resistor again it is a single resistor which replaces the two resistors in parallel giving me the same effect the single resistor which replaces 
the combination of resistors in parallel with the same effect. And what was the same effect? Again, it should draw the same current under the same potential. Therefore, we wrote I equals V by RP. Same current is drawn under the same potential. So, equating equations 1 and 2, 1 by RP is 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. And this is the expression for effective resistance when two resistors are in parallel. So if you analyze, this is the reciprocal of the resistances, which shows effective resistance has decreased. Again, inverse to the capacitor concept. So when two resistors are connected in parallel, effective resistance decreases and two resistors connected in series effective resistance always increases very pondering thought my dear students when you do circuit connections you require these concepts to understand circuit making now i want you all to concentrate on the third note here where I have given you the expression for branch current. So branch current was due to splitting or division of currents when resistors were in parallel. And that branch current is given by the formula main current into resistance of the other branch not the same branch main current into resistance of the other branch divided by the sum of the resistances so how do i calculate branch current it is main current into resistance of the other branch divided by the sum of the resistances. That is, if I calculate I1, which was the current flowing through R1, main current I into resistance of the other branch, not the same branch, R2 divided by the sum of the resistances R1 plus R2. Similarly, I2, current which flows through R2, main current into resistance of the other branch R1 divided by R1 plus R2. So this is how we calculate branch currents. Now a very simple topic following something called as a cell. You can see, this is the diagram which indicates a cell. Pentot cell girl, no dear every day, all those things, the nipo cells. What is a cell? It says, a cell is a device which is used to maintain Steady current in electrical circuit. Steady current. I don't want the strength, the magnitude of current to fluctuate in a circuit. In that case, I use something called as a cell. So it is a device used to maintain steady current, non-fluctuating current in a circuit. It has two electrodes, positive electrode P and negative electrode N, which is dipped inside a chemical substance called electrolyte. A cell always has two electrodes, Positive electrode P, negative electrode N, 
which is dipped inside an electrolyte, which is a chemical substance. Electrolysis happens because of which there is ionization and ions are created. Flow of these ions constitute current and therefore we say a cell converts chemical energy into electrical energy because of the electrolysis in the chemical substance ions are created these ions further constitute electric current so in a cell chemical energy is getting converted into electrical energy and least possible electric energy is drawn from a cell least possible energy because steady current is flowing so if you put all these things together we say cell is a device used to maintain firm current steady current in a circuit and basically a cell converts chemical energy into electrical energy now there is a resistance offered between the electrodes of the cell if this resistance is infinity practically to say maximum if the resistance between the electrodes of a cell is maximum resistance is maximum which means least current is drawn from the cell resistance maximum ide alva opposition jaasti ide large current cannot flow and this is called open circuit what is an open circuit where current does not flow through that circuit why current does not flow because the resistance is maximum open circuit if the resistance across the cell is small finite current is drawn and this is called closed circuit closed circuit some current flows through the circuit there is less opposition and finally when the resistance is zero practically to say minimum maximum current flows through that circuit minimum resistance large current flows and that is what is called short circuit open circuit where no current flows closed circuit where minimum current flows some current flows and short circuit where maximum current flows now a very important term called emf electromotive force my dear students i have a simple circuit a cell of some emf e resistance r and current is flowing through the circuit when i say current is flowing it is nothing but the charge which is flowing in the circuit if the charge has to flow through this circuit it requires some energy some potential as i told earlier if there is no potential difference there is no flow of charges therefore students please understand if the charge has to flow through the circuit it requires some energy and who is providing that energy it is the cell and this energy is called 
electromotive force, driving force. The cell is driving the charge through the circuit. Observe, Madi. Suppose the charge is coming here, it is getting opposition from this resistance. It is opposed by this resistor. If it has to continue flowing, it has to overcome this resistance, needs energy that is supplied by the cell. And that is what is called EMF. It is the electrical energy spent by the cell to move a charge once completely in the circuit. The cell is driving the charge in the circuit, spending some electrical energy so that the charge moves completely in the circuit. And that energy is called EMF, electromotive force. The next one. Internal resistance. Simple. What is resistance? Opposition. What is internal resistance? It is the opposition offered by the cell. When I say cell, it is the opposition offered by the electrodes of the cell to the flow of electric charges. You studied external resistance. The source was opposing the flow of charges. If it is the cell with the electrodes, the opposition is called internal resistance. And finally, there is a bookwork which I treat as an assignment for you all. But considering the analysis of the expression, this is a very important expression for us. Expression for current in terms of EMF of the cell, in terms of internal resistance of the cell, and in terms of external resistance. Current I equals E divided by R plus small r. Remember, wherever you have a cell of EMF E and internal resistance small r, this is the expression for current. And this is something we call terminal potential difference. Potential difference across the terminals of the cell. Potential difference across the ends of the cell, which is ER divided by R plus R. So, my dear students, today we studied when two resistors are connected in series, effective resistance always increases. In parallel, effective resistance decreases. What was a cell? A device which gives steady current in a circuit. A device which converts chemical energy into electrical energy. What was EMF? Simply driving force. What has to be driven? Charge. Who is driving? Cell. So EMF is the electrical energy spent by a cell to move a charge completely in the circuit. Internal resistance, effective opposition offered by the cell together with its electrodes to the flow of charges. Hope the session was simple, appreciable. I expect you all to go through it, study, and we come back and meet in the next session. Until then, thank you.